Hello, and thanks for returning to my channel. Now, in this video and the next video, we'll be doing the naming of branching alkanes. For the naming of branching alkanes, we follow a certain set of rules. And if we keep these rules in mind and follow the steps, we always end up naming the hydrocarbon in the right way. The first rule is the longest chain rule. As you see, I have some examples of compounds that we will be naming. This first example is a compound that we have. And the first step is to choose the longest chain that is possible in that compound. Now, keep in mind, it's not necessary that the longest chain appears to be straight. The longest chain could be branch, a branch which appears to be branching out and would go further ahead from that and would have a larger number of carbon atoms. So a straight or a zigzag chain which has the longest, the largest number of carbon atoms is chosen as the parent hydrocarbon and the alkane is named as that parent hydrocarbon. Then the substituents are then treated as branches and they are named accordingly and assigned the locates. So, the longest chain in this case, let us see, um, this is first carbon, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This hydrocarbon has 9 carbon atoms. If I count this chain, let us see how many carbons do we get? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's only 8. 9 is more than 8, therefore the word root here would be non and since it's an ane, it's no name. The compound, the parent hydrocarbon is no name. Now we look for the branches. We find that on the second carbon you have a methyl group as a branch and on the sixth carbon we have the ethyl group as a branch. There are two branches in this chain. Then we know that the Methyl and the alkyl groups are named as substituents, that is the secondary prefix. And before writing the name of a substituent, we have to write a locant which tells, which is a number which gives us the position of that particular uh, substituent. The second rule is known as the lowest sum of locants rule. According to this rule, if I, you can number this chain from both the sides, that is, I can, it can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or I could have numbered it from this side, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The locates, if I count from this side, another thing to keep in mind is that you can only number a chain once in the beginning. Once you've started naming the compound, you cannot start counting from the other side. You just choose any side, either it is this or that. But which one would it be? Is decided by the lowest sum of locates. So what are the locates here? Here they are 2 and 6. So what is 2 plus 6? And here this is 8 and, and 4. 4 plus 8. So obviously 2 plus 6 is the lower sum of locates. This would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, yes. So 4 plus 8 is 12 while 2 plus 6 is 8. Obviously this side, the locates, if you count from this side, you get a lower sum. And hence this would be the lowest sum this side of the locates 6 and 2 are to be taken. The third rule now we have is the different, if you have different alkyl groups like we have in this example, that is a methyl group and an ethyl group, then which one do you write first? Do you write according to the lower locant or do you write according to some other um, factor? Here, what we keep in mind is the alphabetical sequence. That substituent which comes first in alphabetical order is written first. So we know this is methyl and this is ethyl. What comes first? E comes first. Therefore, we write the ethyl first. So what would the name of this compound be? It would be 6, give the locant, 6, ethyl. Why did I write a capital here? 
because when you write your name, you always start with a capital letter. Similarly, an organic compound, the first letter, whatever it is, is always capital. So 6 ethyl hyphen, then 2 methyl and no name. There should be no gap between the methyl and the no name. It should be written in one line. It will be 6 ethyl, 2 methyl, no name. Okay? Do you see that I use two hyphens here? The hyphens are to separate the numbers, the locants from the names of the substituents. So that was the first rule. We first chose the longest chain. The second rule was we assigned the locants in such a way that the sum of the locants should come to be the minimum. The one that has lower sum of locants, that direction of counting will be chosen out of the two directions in a chain. Then if there are different alkyl groups, then they should be written in alphabetical order. And the locant according to it has to be written. Whatever locant is assigned to that group has to be written before it with a hyphen in between. The next rule is identical is that if you have identical substituents then we use the prefix di, tri, tetra for the substituent. For example, in this compound, let us name this compound. It has one, two, three, four, five carbon atoms. If it has five carbon atoms, it means it is a pentane. Right? It's a pentane but we notice that it has got a methyl group here, a methyl group here, and a methyl group here. So how would we assign locants? If I remember, every substituent needs a locant. I, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The two methyls here, both of them have locant. If you count from this side, have the locant 2 and 2. But if I count from this side, these two have the locant 4 and 4. So, if you count from this side, what are the three locants? 2, 2, 4. 2 plus 2 plus 4, 8. If I count from this side, it is 2, 4, 4, which is 10. 2 plus 4 plus 4 is 10. So, this side, the counting on this side is right because it gives us the lower set of locants. So what would the name of this compound be? It is 2, 2, 4, 2, 2, comma, 2, comma, 4, hyphen, trimethyl pentane. Keep in mind that I have to put commas here. Why? Because if I had not put the commas, then the 224 could be read as 224 also. And the reason that we assign locants to each of the methyl groups is that let us assume that if one of the methyls was at the third carbon and not at the second carbon, would it have been the same compound? No. Then what the, would the name of the compound have been? If we did not have a methyl here and had it here, then we would have, we would have had 234 trimethyl pentane would have been the name of the compound. So we find that when you have identical substituents, then we use prefixes di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa for the substituents. The fifth rule is that if you have two, wait, let us do one more. If you have these substituents, but the names are different, what are the substituents here? One methyl, this is also a methyl, and this is a this is ethyl. And what is the longest chain? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It is heptane. This is heptane. And if I count from this side, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 5, 6, 7. Here it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 5. 3, 4, 4 is smaller. Therefore, that would be right. So how would I name it? While you are writing the choosing the alphabetical order, the two dimethyls, it is not D which you will consider in alphabetical order. It is the name of the substituent M, methyl, which has to be considered while choosing the alphabetical order. So here 
it will again be ethyl will have to be written first and the dimethyl will come later although d comes before e yet it is the m that has to be considered so how would we name this this would be 3 ethyl 4,4 dimethyl heptane. Am I clear? Now we come to the fifth rule, which will be the last rule I'll be discussing in this video, and the remaining rules we'll do in the next video. The fifth rule is that if you have two substituents at equivalent positions, then we assign the locants in such a way that the one which is lower in alphabetical order gets the lower locant. What does equivalent positions mean? What is the parent here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Therefore, it is octane. What are the locants from both the sides for the ethyl and the methyl group? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If I count from this side, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the sum of the locants is the same. When you have the sum of the locants to be the same on both the sides, such substituents are said to be at equivalent positions. Then, which one should we choose? Ethyl comes before methyl. Therefore, ethyl should get the lower locant. So, what should our direction of counting be? Again, this one. So this would be 3 ethyl. 3 ethyl, 6, sorry, it will be a small letter, 6 methyl octane. Am I clear? So these are the first five rules. We now follow another four rules to name these hydrocarbons, but I'll cover them in the next 